Sun setting over the Gulf of Mexico and what has been a gorgeous weekend and more specifically a fantastic four days of softball as we conclude the 2023 Tax Act Clearwater Invitational presented by Evo Shield. Tonight we'll see two programs coming off historic super regional runs and trying to take that next step in building their programs. Mississippi State, the Bulldogs out of the SEC, taking on the 20th ranked UCF Knights as we say hello and welcome in everyone with the three-time All-American from Tennessee, Madison Shipman. I'm Tiffany Green and this four-day event has been filled with 39 games. Now we're at number 40. We get to close it out and there's just been so much energy that's resonated throughout this Eddie Seymour complex. Well, I think this tournament has delivered in every possible way. We've seen great pitching performances. We've seen great defense, but most of all, the bats really showed out this entire weekend. Typically, the pitchers have the advantage early in the season but not down in here down in clear water the bats were alive home runs flying all over the place and the energy was electric indeed and when we saw that sunday showcase between seventh ranked florida state and number 12 alabama more leaving the yard yeah it's this freshman starting it off with the solo shot kenley kahalen a big star for the alabama crimson tide followed up by bailey dowling this one was an absolute Moonshot to put the tide up early, but then Janai Kerr for Florida State, another solo shot. All home runs in this ball game. You knew it was going to be a good pitcher's duel. Montana Fouts dealing in the circle. The last out made of the ball game, a huge win for Alabama. Well, softball fans didn't have to wait until May to get those postseason caliber matchups. They got it right here in February of those 39 games played. Oklahoma State and UCLA both coming out undefeated. Quite impressive. You talked about the offensive onslaught that we saw over the last four days. 87 knocked out of the park, so not necessarily friendly for the pitchers, but definitely a nice boost to the offense. So we recap the weekend, and now we set our sights on UCF and Mississippi State. And for UCF, just like a lot of programs, graduating one of the mainstays in Gianna Mancha in the circle. But that's okay because they restacked and reloaded. Well, I think really both of these teams graduated some huge players for their squad. So they're looking to see who's going to be those missing pieces that's going to fill those voids. And one of the players for UCF could be Caitlin Felton. She's so, shown some great promise early in this season, really worked hard in the offseason to try to pick up some of those innings that they lost with Gianna Mancha. She's going to bring the ball with some pretty good velocity in the upper 60s, and she's going to throw the ball to all quadrants. That elite spin, and she's a workhorse in the circle. The key for her is to nibble on the outside part of the zone to see if she can get Mississippi State to get those easy ground ball outs. Want an opportunity to try to end on a high note. This Knights team has been tested all weekend long, one and three. So they're going to face off against Mississippi State. The Bulldogs have a number of power hitters. We saw Paige Cook in our last game against South Florida get them on the board in a pinch hitting roll. Yeah, a couple of innings in a row that Mississippi State was able to get runners on board but just could not come through with that timely hit. And it was Paige Cook, the veteran on this team, coming through with that big three-run shot. And then the floodgates busted wide open for the rest of the offense. Their head coach, Sam Ricketts, in her third season leading this program, correction, fourth season leading this program, and what they've done coming off again, that super regional berth, hosting it in Starkville has fans absolutely excited. And you could say the same for Sydney Ball Malone and her UCF program. Again, another impressive season stacked on 49 wins in total a conference championship hosting and winning a regional so many high points in 2022 quite honestly she said i didn't want it to end <laughs> well both of these women really elevating these programs and elevating the standards that they set every single year bringing up those expectations and these players have lived up to those expectations so far And the first pitch of our finale, it's Macy Graff. Graff, who started it off in the last game, went three for four, nearly hit for the cycle in that one rule, rule win over USF. So facing off against back-to-back -back teams 
out of the American and quickly up in the count. Two balls and no strikes. So Graf, one of seven freshmen coming into the program at Mississippi State. Had a blistering start to her opening weekend in a Bulldog uniform. Taking all the way, three balls and a strike. Love to see the smiles and the energy coming from the dugout. It's an 8 p.m. start. It's been a long weekend, grueling, a lot of tests and challenges. But always something to smile about when we're talking about and playing the sport of softball. I think you see these teams bringing the energy every single game right now. Mississippi State dancing in the dugout. They're out here having a just an absolute great time playing against some of the best competition in the country, knowing that every single pitch they see is making them better. Mississippi State has won three over the weekend, trying to pick up another against a top 25 opponent. Close pitch by Felton, doesn't get called, so a walk to the leadoff batter. Already we're seeing early in this ball game a really tight strike zone back behind the plate. And we talk all the time about how early in the game it's all about these pitchers establishing that zone. What sorts of pitches are they going to get called for strikes? And right now, Caitlin Felton having to zone in, bring that ball just a little bit more over the plate to get those called. An all-star cast of officials behind home plate, Matt Dial. Standing in the left side of the box is Briley St. Clair. The senior who's put together a nice tournament. Another base hit. She had three in the last game, and the first two batters aboard for State. It's a great start for Mississippi State. You want to set the tone right from the beginning of this ball game. You've got a freshman to lead it off, and then Briley St. Clair following it up, knowing that Felton's going to try to attack the strike zone early. The first pitch that she sees, she smacks it right back up the middle. And already Coach Ball Malone can feel the momentum shifting to Mississippi State. So she's going to call a quick time here to come together and talk to her defense. And Cindy Ball Malone. Seven arms on that pitching staff with three returners. We mentioned Caitlin Felton among them. She talked about just the work that that group put in over the summer to just get stronger and be more explosive. But also, you can't create any of those these types of situations in scrimmages or, you know, inner squad ball. you got to be in it. You've already got some pitchers warming up in the bullpen too, Angelina DeVoe. But you mentioned the graduation of Kama Woodall and Gianna Mancha, two pitchers who really were the workhorses for this staff last year. Coach Paul Malone kind of addressed the elephant in the room to start off this year and said, hey, we need some pitchers to step up to be those, those arms in the circle for us this season. And somebody who really took the time in the offseason to embrace that role was Caitlin Felton. She wanted that job. Well, coming in, preseason ranking of number 18 in the nation. And even with some of those newcomers, you got returners like Jada Cody and Shanna Doherty helping to provide stability. And speaking of, you think about a player like Chloe Malaulu who has to step in to an even greater role, a three-year captain, but now true leadership elevated for her as Mia Davidson graduates out of the program last season. 
Chloe Malaulu has really grown in the power in her swing, and this is what she did on Saturday against Michigan, blasting it way out of the yard. She likes to hit the ball back up the middle, but in the past two seasons has really worked on her strength in her lower half to be able to produce more home runs up at the plate, and right there, all that hard work paying off on that swing. One, two count to Malu'ulu, who has six RBI on the weekend. Grounds it over to second base, advances the runners, and one away. We saw this a lot from Mississippi State in their first game of the day against South Florida. They were able to get the leadoff runner on base, move them over into scoring position, but it took until the fourth inning for them to be able to come up with that timely hit. So you know they're looking to try to make those adjustments a, big er, a bit earlier in this ball game, knowing they're going up against number 20 UCF. Matalasi Fa'apito, dribbler, grounder over to second base in the RBI, ground out, and the Bulldogs on the board first. You know what, Tiffany? Sometimes it doesn't take the home run over the fence to score runs. Matalasi Fa'apito just getting enough of this ball to hit it over to Michaela Macario at second base. She fielded it, realized she wasn't going to be able to get Macy Graff out, and very smartly turned and got the out, the sure out over at first base, but it does allow that run to score easily. One of two transfers coming into the program, Kirsten Landers and Landers in her first season with the Bulldogs coming over from Florida State. Come on out. Come on out. She was in the dugout remembering when Mississippi State stunned the Seminoles in the regional round. And Landers comes over with a big bat. Uh, she's been feeling it this weekend, driving this one way out of the park. You can see her using her lower body to lift that low pitch down in the zone. But she wasn't done there. She hit another one, <laughs> yanking it over the right field wall. She has such quick hands through the zone, too. That's what's really impressed me about her swing. She's somebody who likes to toe up on that chalk line and challenge these pitchers to throw the ball right there. Slugging Przenich over a thousand and happy to have her healthy and back in the game. One of those fun players to watch tore ACL and missed all of last season. The pitch from Felton. Missing just a little bit outside, two balls and two strikes. You can see a smile on Jada Cody's face back behind the plate, too, asking our home plate umpire where exactly that pitch is missing, relaying it to Caitlin Felton so that she can make those slight adjustments. A good-looking pitch coming in, though. She swung and missed that one to throw out to first base, and that ends the inning, but not before Mississippi State breaks through on the scoreboard. UCF and the Knights line up, coming up to bat next. Tax Act Clearwater Invitational, presented by Evo Shield, is brought to you by Tax Act. File for less and get more. St. Pete Clearwater, Florida, let's shine. Plan your escape at visitstpeteclearwater.com. Evo Shield, the source for custom fitting protective gear, and Gatorade, and our commitment to fuel tomorrow. Bring out the blankets, about 60 degrees, and a great family outing for all. As we're back here in Clearwater, Aspen Wesley, the starter tonight for the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Wesley, a senior for this squad. She's not going to blow you away with her velocity. She's going to bring it low to mid-60s, but she relies on that great spin and movement with her pitches. She likes to work all four quadrants of the zone, and she's going to mix speeds as well, constantly trying to keep this US UCF offense off balance. 
Well, Aspen Wesley, who proved to be pivotal in last year's success, continuing to put the building blocks on top of the positives. Michaela Macario trying to lay down the butt, charging in was Paige Cook. She read it right just underneath her glove. And Macario is on with a leadoff hit. Almost looked like she overran it. She read it immediately, starts charging hard, but it actually comes off bat pretty hard too. Just runs right by it. It's a smart play, but you almost have to kind of slow down your feet to react to where that ball's gonna go. Just goes right past her. Air over at third base, allows the leadoff runner on board now for the Knights. Jada Cody looks at strike one. Cody just one of those really exciting players. Both she and Shannon Doherty can have you jumping out of your seats <laughs> with the way they swing the bat. Does duty behind the plate, but also brings the big stick to the park. Yeah, both those players very much power hitters. Jada Cody, one of the most dynamic players you're gonna see on the field too. She really can do it all, seeing her back behind the plate today. Last year's American Tournament, most outstanding player. 75 RBI on the season <laughs> last year, incredible. The 0-2 from Wesley. Fouled off to stay alive for Cody. That was a single season record for UCF. The RBI in the program. And well, I tell you, each year, I think Sydney Ball Malone continues to, to bring in great athletes, fantastic players that blossom right before our eyes. Now you see those 15 home runs, but again, that number 75. RBIs are a collective stat too. You have to have people on base to be able to drive them in, so that's a huge number. And Michaela Macario, who was last year's American Rookie of the Year, is grimacing after taking off to second base. On the wild pitch, I think that one hit her right there in the Throw down in the dirt, it looks like it. Ooh. Oh, she even reached to try to like, block it a little <laughs> bit, it looks like. It's a good read on the change up down in the dirt, something that you're gonna see these runners really be heads up about, knowing that Wesley likes to go to that off speed quite often. Cody, and lines out to Cook. So Macario stays put. At second base, one down. Almost sounded like she got a bit jammed on that pitch. Again, she's not going to blow the ball by you, but she mixes speeds just enough to mess up your timing up at the plate. It's still another opportunity for Shannon Doherty now with a runner in scoring position. Doherty puts this one in the air into center field. Briley St. Clair is there. And two retired. Another one of those swings where the ball's moving just enough to where it's not hitting on the sweet spot of that barrel. A good swing by Doherty, but that late break of the pitch. So far, Aspen Wesley and her spin is moving really nicely. Here's Chloe Evans, Minnesota transfer, first pitch swing in, Brownlee barely got around to try to even tip that ball, sharply hit to right field, scores another run for UCF. The first one for the Knights. <laughs> Chloe Evans, the transfer coming in from Minnesota, has already come through with several clutch hits for the Knights this season, this one being another one. 
perfectly timed up and ropes it over the head of Aquana Brownlee at first base down that right field line to tie up this ball game. And Tiffany, I'd imagine we're going to see plenty more offense in tonight's <laughs> ball game. Now, what makes you say that? Maybe <laughs> we were hanging just out. Just a gut feeling, <laughs> Tiffany. Did we see 20 home runs <laughs> on one field this weekend? I think we're bringing the offense vibes with mm -hmm. us no matter what game we mm -hmm. call, no matter what field we're on. Savannah Adams trying to look for another ribby for the Knights. Picked up one yesterday against Alabama. Well, UCF has been in a couple of close ball games that have gone to extra innings, both coming up on the short end. But that's okay because coaches don't mind that, especially this time of year, because it's a great learning experience. Now on that Bama game, they were up 4 nothing <laughs> at one point, ended up losing it in extra innings, all part of that learning experience you're talking about, Tiffany, especially for some of these young players on this squad. Gets past Jackie McKenna behind the dish. And a wild pitch now moves Macario. Correction, Evans. Over to third base and 60 feet closer to home. And goes down swinging. Savannah Adams just fooled on that one from Aspen Wesley. But the game tied up as we move to two. Late night softball action for these youngsters, but they know it's the hottest ticket in town. Don't believe me. Tickets sold out for this year's event in less than 15 minutes. So guess what? You got to get ready for next year because why the fifth edition of this invitational is going to be just as good as this year. I look at all these teams and I think of how many great matchups we're going to see la next year. I think this year we were talking about, oh, this top 10 matchup, this top 10 matchup. Every single year, this tournament does not disappoint. Very this one hasn't even ended faces. this year, and I'm already I'm looking forward to next year. <laughs> First pitch swinging by Paige Cook all the way to the wall. Remember, she had that three-run homer in the last game against South Florida, and she starts off the second with a stand-up double. Cook just seeing the ball so well right now. She pulled her home run over the left field wall in last game, and this one she goes opposite field. A great job of extension, driving it with her back leg, able to start off this inning with a stand-up double. Well, she and the Bulldogs trying to make the best of it. We won't see them next year, but UCF coming back. But they made some noise this weekend, did the Bulldogs out of Starkville. You see 30 runs put up. Eight home runs Whew. and 19 extra base hits. We knew at the start of the season, when you look at the names in their lineup, that they have a ton of pop in their bat, of course, having to make up for some of that loss of run production in the graduation of Mia Davidson, the all-time SEC home run leader but they're spreading that power throughout mm -hmm. their offense. That's what I really like from the Bulldogs this season. Had a home run record of 73, best in the program. How about a Quanta Brownlee this weekend? Couple of home runs, including a grand salami. Looks at strike one from Caitlin Felton. Well, Brownlee has a runner in scoring position with Paige Cook ready to come home. Yeah. 
Smack that one hard and foul. You think about last year, she really kind of came in more pinch hitting situations or as a pinch runner and now being inserted into that lineup. Really the last two seasons, you go back to the 2021 season, only seven at-bats. Last year, only 13 at-bats. So to see what she's been able to do in more of a starting role here in February, she has so much power, especially in her lower half. She really does a nice job of using that back leg in her swing. Puts this one high into the air in left field, giving chases Olivia Ev El Elliott. And good job for Elliott to track that ball and bring it in. Seen a couple of those high fly balls mm -hmm. give some outfielders some trouble this weekend. You know, sometimes we take for granted that that's an easy play, but not always sometimes. You know, in the daytime, you got to deal with the sun at night. Under the lights, we've seen the wind die down a little bit, but still, credit for making that routine play. Yeah, and if that ball gets up high enough above the lights, it becomes really hard for those outfielders to see. And beautiful complex here in Clearwater. The Browns crew has done an amazing job of taking care of the fields. We talked about the number of games that have been played and just few short days. But we've also seen that we need more room. <laughs> <laughs> this baby is bursting at the scenes as Nadia Barbary grounds out. Two away. Well, here's our next ACC Big 12 Monday double header at 7 Eastern. You'll see Louisville and Duke and then over to the Big 12 as fifth-ranked Kansas travels to TCU. You can always catch it always on the ESPN app as well. Jalen Wilson doing his thing for the Jayhawks, leading the team. 20 points a game. Be interested to see if there's some moves when it comes to the men's college basketball mm -hmm. rankings. Alabama losing this week, Purdue losing yeah. this week. Critical parts of the season is they're coming to a close, but this is just the second weekend of college softball. Jackie McKenna. Out of Parkland, Florida. And the senior getting the catching duties tonight for the Bulldogs. Bottom of the hour. Yeah, some shipment Tiffany Green here with you. That went in for a strike. UCF has tested themselves this weekend with a rigorous schedule. Both programs coming off outstanding 2022 campaigns. I like that spot. She continues to work that low and outside corner, something we really didn't see called in the first inning. She's gotten some called in this inning, but they decide to go even further away. The benefit of being ahead in the count is you can kind of toy with batters a little bit, see if you can get those swings and misses. But I think that's a good location on a one-two count to throw that pitch. And you go back to that same spot, but you drop it down in velocity. That shows you how close that pitch prior to that one was. As a batter, you start thinking, is it going to be called for a strike? Do I need to swing at it? And Jackie McKenna decides to get her swing off on that off-speed pitch to foul it off. Even count. And McKenna ropes this one into left. Another one comes in to scores. Paige Cook touches home. 2-1 Mississippi State. With how good her timing was on that swing, it almost felt like she was anticipating that Felton was going to work the ball inside on that pitch. 
squares it up and drives it hard out to Elliott in left field to give the Bulldogs the lead. The RBI single for Jackie McKenna. McKenna all smiles, producing with two outs. And back to the top with Macy Graff. In a short time this weekend and just watching Graff, I mean, her numbers just scorch off that screen, right? Eight of 14. And again, just a freshman out of Alito, Texas. Yeah, she's not swinging like a freshman. Yeah. She's shown elite plate discipline in this tournament, going up against some really tough pitchers on opposing teams. Very confident when she steps into the box. Got those eyes right back at the pitcher and a really sweet lefty swing to go along with it. Belton gets her there. One ball and two strikes. So Caitlin Felton looking to get out of the inning. Giving up a run in the first two and Jada Cody having a quick discussion with her teammate. She looks to the dugout and the wristband and readies for the pitch. into the outfield deep, just above the warning track. And that ends the inning. But thanks to Jackie McKenna, Mississippi State up 2-1. Let's take you to the number one team in the country facing off against the Baylor Bears earlier today. It's not easy to hold this Oklahoma offense down, but when you get some run support like Baylor did from Shaylin Govan. You know you have a chance to upset the Sooners, and it was Aaliyah Einford in the circle closing it out for the Baylor Bears, and that is a huge win to take down number one, Oklahoma. Shocking upset of the top-ranked Sooners. Meanwhile, third-ranked Florida continues to roll in their absolutely incredible start. How about Miss? over from the Kentucky Wildcats throwing a no hitter and of course Clemson is always in the mix one of those programs on the rise out of the ACC one of the best two-way players in the country and Valerie Cagle for Clemson I think that's one thing that we've seen so far in the first two weekends of this season is a lot of teams losing ball games early and I, I think it's important to note that none of these teams are going to hit the panic button when you lose early. Everybody's still trying to figure out those pieces, what's going to be the best recipe to win ball games down the stretch. Everybody's learning, including the Sooners. But hats off to Baylor and the job that both those pitchers did in the circle. Starting pitcher, Dariana Orm, like we mentioned. Aaliyah Benford coming in to close it out. It is not easy to hold Oklahoma to just three runs. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about the two-time defending national champions. They're going for a three-peat. That's one of the major storylines coming into this season. But one of the things that Patty Gasso said, the Sooners head coach, after that game, she said, hey, look, that's an extremely valuable experience because the value is in the response. Leading it off is Kennedy Searcy for the Knights, who sends it in the right field for the leadoff base hit. You know, just to follow up your point about what Coach Gassel was saying after that loss, I feel like we heard something similar when they went to Georgia, when they were on that crazy undefeated streak, ended up traveling to Athens and losing their first ball game of the year. She said it was really a learning and teaching moment for that team because they understood what it felt like to be in those situations and what they needed to do to not be in that situation again. And of course, went on to win a national championship. Well, it's the extra work that you put in. And that's something that Sydney Ball Malone said to her team, like, look, we made it to this point and we eclipsed a number of firsts in our program. So now you come back 
all the more hungry to try to do it again and be even better at it. Well, and the goal for UCF this year is to host a Super Regional because they don't want to get sent to Norman. Cersei was able to slide underneath the tag safely and steals the base and now in scoring position for the Knights to try to even it up. And one way to do that is to have a balanced offense. I think that's what we're seeing from UCF this weekend, not just relying on the home run ball, but putting some runners in motion, stealing bases, dropping down some bunts. Really a well-rounded offense. And you look at what they were able to do last season, again, hosting a regional. Ended up losing to Oklahoma in that super regional. Scooped by Jasmine Williams in the left center. And there it is, the tying run coming across as Searcy touches home. An RBI single for Williams. It's two all. Throughout the rest of this tournament, Jasmine Williams has been in that leadoff spot, decided to move her down in the order for moments like this to come up with runners on base. Gets it off the end of the bat, but you can see how she lets go of her bat. That long extension is what allows it to drop into center field. Kennedy Searcy watching it drop and then turns on the gas around third base, able to score easily. So Williams looking on the dugout. You hear him. And John and Johnny Chiro tries to bunt over the runner. And McKenna runs into the fence. Going all out. Yeah. Nice little brace, though. She, yeah. I think she kind of had an idea of how much room <laughs> she was working with, so you know. <laughs> Sam Ricketts bringing in the entire infield, and this conversation looks very directed to this bunch. And so uh, you played infield, obviously, and had a very successful career at Tennessee. When your coach is bringing you together, what do you think she's saying right here? Well, right here with a runner on first base, especially somebody like Jasmine Williams, who has some speed with a lefty slapper up at the plate, I'd imagine it's all about defensive positioning. Where do you want to put your infielders? It's a tough position when you have two speedy players that are on the field. And so you have to decide, are you going to push your first baseman back, have your second baseman more planted over at second, and then have your shortstop covering the 5-6 hole? And I think that's exactly what they're going to be doing. You can see Aquana Brownlee all the way back behind second base. Second baseman shifted up the middle. That way, the left side of your infield can cover that 5-6 hole. What this does, too, is it forces, almost forces Aspen Wesley to have to throw the ball only on the outside part of the plate because you want to funnel the ball to the left side. You don't want to allow Janisha Rowe to pull a bunt down that right line, down that first baseline, excuse me. Working that outside part of the plate and gets called strike two. So, Rowe having an excellent fall season coming into spring. She was just lightening it, lighting it up. The one, two, and it drops foul. Woo, good effort there from Chloe Malu'ulu. Almost got it in, out of her left field position. And typically with slappers, you're going to see the outfield shaded in a bit more, too. She gets a good jump on it. Oh, just barely out of the reach of her glove. Fantastic effort by the captain out in left field.
So we were just listening in to the chance. I'm just curious to know, like, as a player, you know you're locked in. You have to do what you have to do. But does that at all hype you up or get you going a little bit at the plate? <laughs> I did not hear anything up at the okay. plate. You blocked so it all I the blo noise. I blocked it all out. But I'm sure cheers were happening. I just <laughs> was not aware of them while I was hitting. The 2-2 two -two to row waited on it and successful in her attempt as that one kind of walked its way into the plate and off the glove of Wesley. Well, Monday night, two of the top women's teams out of the Pac-12 square off. And another big one on ESPN, 216th rank UCLA travels to Maples Pavilion to take on Cameron Brink in the third rank Stanford Cardinal. Coverage begins at 9 Eastern after Oklahoma State and West Virginia men's take the court. Cameron Brink, one of those really fun players. She swats it left and right. Goes after it on the boards. We'll see how Olivia Elliott attacks her at bat. First pitch swing and Briley St. Clair running over the center fielder's head. One run rounding, another comes in to score. And no doubt about it, Olivia Elliott said, I knew it from the time it left her hands. It felt good. Elliott swinging the bat so well, had a couple of nice hits against Alabama in this tournament. And this one is a rise ball up and outside. You can see how far up in the box she was trying to take away some of that slow velocity out of the hand of Aspen Wesley off of the wall in center field. What a clutch hit. Jonisha Rowe too, really turning on the <laughs> wheels, running all the way around the bases to score from first base on that double out to center. And Ball Malone's crew figuring some things out and answering here in the bottom half of the second inning and some early bullpen work already as Kenley Hawk warming up for the Bulldogs. When you think about Sam Ricketts and who she felt most comfortable with coming into the season, it was both Wesley and Kenley Hawk who were ready to assume the reins and take over those lead roles. We'll take a quick break from Clearwater, come back with us as UCF is threatening. Let's take a look at tonight's Impact Players brought to you by Visit St. Pete Clearwater. And we already saw in the bottom of the second inning what Kennedy Searcy and Jasmine Williams can do for this UCF squad. I think they're going to be a huge part of this offense, being able to get on base at a consistent clip and set the table for players like Jada Cody and Shannon Doherty. They're going to need that offense this year. And, of course, for... Mississippi State, Chloe Malaulu, the captain, is going to be big for them offensively. But also who we see coming into this ball game right now is Kinley Hawk. We talked about having to make up for the loss of innings in the graduation of Annie Willis for Mississippi State. Kinley Hawk is somebody that can really be the workhorse for this Bulldog squad. And we're going to see her coming in in relief in this tough situation here against UCF. Fourth year in the program coming off of major turnaround in the circle we saw last season through nearly a hundred pitches or hundred innings rather for the Bulldogs and the different look that she provides in the circle completely different look than what we saw from Aspen Wesley she is going to bring the heat high velocity she'll bring it into the high 60s and she likes to work primarily down in the zone she's got one of those heavy drop balls but this offseason she's added a rise ball and an off speed just to give those batters a different look so aspen wesley taking a quick look at right, what's going on on the field is sam ricketts put something out to Kinley Hawk and now steps back in and is ready to keep it going. 3-0 count to Michaela Macaro. Three balls and a strike. Oh, 
Sicario mentioned earlier. AC, rookie of the year. Back to back strikes thrown in there from Kenley Hawk to bring it, the count full. There's that off-speed pitch coming in about 62 miles per hour. When you're already throwing 68, 69 on a consistent basis, all you have to do is drop it just enough to get the hitter's timing mm -hmm. off and let your defense work behind you. The payoff. Macario commits, goes around, and strikeout for Kenley Hawk. After the off-speed pitch, she comes back with straight heat, 69 miles per hour with a bit of downward bite too. Look at the way she flips her hand over to get it to fall off the table right at the end. Macario swinging on top of it, and that's the way you set the tone when you step into the ball game. Wasting no time as Jada Cody first pitch swinging into right field, and an RBI double for Jada Cody. First pitch swinging for Cody, so powerful going to the right side. This one got through the infield in a hurry. She's watching the ball out in right field and with that slight bobble, able to move over into scoring position, just replacing her teammate, Olivia Elliott. So if you're scoring at home, ruled a single, and then the run scores on the E9. With Cody and Doherty, the anchors of this offense. And this has been a great inning so far for the Knights. And Doherty nearly beat that one out. She's thrown out and two away. And the corner's definitely respecting the power that Doherty had. Brownlee playing way back behind first base. Had to run all the way over there to get that out. See, she's playing way back on Chloe Evans, too. We saw back in the first inning how hard Chloe Evans hit the ball down that right field line. Foul back by Evans. Eighth batter of the inning for UCF. Close pitch, not called. Ball on the strike. The pitch from Hawk. Inside. Chloe Evans awaits the pitch, the chopper right back to Kenley Hawk. Right there was Macy Graff to back up her pitcher and makes the throw to first in time. Nice defense to end the inning, but not before UCF puts a few more runs on the board. Jasmine Williams, Olivia Elliott, and Jada Cody getting it done for the Knights.
Welcome back to the 2023 Tax Act Clearwater Invitational presented by Evo Shield. And this is what the viewing audience has seen all weekend on, our, on your screens, right? Is you're in the stands, but you also have to have a phone or device out because you want to see what's happening on all the other fields. Well, there were like so many games going yeah. on. You had to have probably multiple screens mm -hmm. in your pocket. You can walk back and forth and see some games in person, but also you have to have access to everything that's going on at some of those other fields. And the cool part about it is, what, the other set of fields about a mile away, and there was, like, no room to park, so you could take, like, the little trolley. The entire fan experience with the concourse and the food trucks, the merch out that way. I mean, thousands of fans filed into this complex. And there's so much effort that goes into planning an event of this magnitude. And we talked about it's the fourth iteration of it. And it just grows bigger and bigger, bigger and bigger, and gets better and better each year. You know, Tiffany, we had the morning games the past couple of days, and I think my favorite part was getting into the booth early for when the gates open for the fans and <laughs> watching them sprint into the concourse to get their seats. Some of those fans were moving pretty fast, oh, too, yeah. oh, I must yeah. say. And, and you referenced those fans. Our, our wonderful crew was able to, like, capture that. Oh, wait a minute. Like, oh, no, dude, you're on You're on you're TV. On TV. <laughs> like, <laughs> the fans get pub and love, okay? <laughs> like, whether you're wrapped around the corner trying to get in or if you're in the stands and watching, like, hey, I told you, the games are on. <laughs> the chopper over to second from Briley St. Clair and an errant throw from Michaela Macario. And St. Clair is aboard safely after the air. And that's what speed's going to do. It's going to put pressure on the defense to have to make the play quickly. This one bounces into the ground high up in the air. Macario does a nice job of charging it, but just doesn't throw it towards Shannon Doherty's right shoulder enough. When you're moving away from first base, you almost have to over-exaggerate that throw. Because of that, gets Byer and a leadoff runner on board for Mississippi State. In some discussion, Tyler Bratton, the assistant coach in the third base box, having a quick chat with Matt Dial. So he convenes the group. It's James Colsey and Carlos Guzman. I think maybe the conversation here was where the throw ended up because if it goes into the dugout, then you're awarded that next base. It got pretty close but it didn't make it in there. Chloe Malaulu swings at the first pitch. And remember, Briley St. Clair is a speedster. She can't take off. was taking a good jump, went back to first. <laughs> Top of the nine o'clock hour Eastern Standard Time and number 20 UCF coming back after trailing early in this game and put up four runs last inning to have a 5-2 advantage. Yeah! The Knights who have challenged themselves like everyone that has come to Clearwater all weekend long. And Cindy Ball Malone knows that there are high expectations for this group out of Orlando. Think about last year competing in the American before moving over to the Big 12.
you said, there's a lot of excitement, too, after how they finished last season, really started off last season with a bang, that walk-off hit by Shannon Doherty <laughs> against Georgia, kicked off the entire softball season. But where they ended up making it to a Super Regional, she said even the interest in their camps this past offseason, the level of talent has really risen, and even more excitement, too, joining the Big 12 next year. Well, she said no longer can she just look any kind of way going to the grocery store or making a quick run out because everyone knows about UCF softball. So as Cincinnati, Houston, and UCF join next season, then we'll see the departure of Oklahoma and Texas. going over to the SEC to join Mississippi State and company. Might take me a while to get used to yes. seeing all these teams in mm -hmm. these different conferences. Conferences are moving around like players <laughs> yeah. in the transfer <laughs> portal, right? <laughs> but it was interesting, too, hearing how Coach Ball Malone's starting to prepare for that change, too, by, one, scheduling these top opponents. Off the end of the bat, bobble there by Doherty. Makes the diving stab back to first base and just in time to get out. Malaulu. It's a nice play there. Initially, the ball coming off the bat, not hit very hard, but a lot of spin on it. It skips away from Doherty, but she's able to recover. She notices that she's not going to have enough time to beat out the speedy Malaulu, so she goes with the dive and tags first pace. I love to see the effort that she's given her pitcher out there. Matalasi Faapito credited with an RBI ground out to even up the game at one apiece. Back in the first. Registering at 56 mile per hour. Slowed down a little bit off the fingertips of Felton. It's one and one. Well, and Fapito is one of the big power bats in this lineup, so you have to be able to mix speeds. Trying to get her timing off just a bit so that maybe she hits it off the end of the bat because when she connects, it can go a long way. Ended up with 14 home runs on last season, 40 RBI. One thing that she's working on coming into this year, though, maybe minimizing the strikeouts. She ended up with 38 strikeouts last season, looking to be able to put the ball in play at a more consistent clip. Fahapito grounds it over to Macario. Two away, Briley St. Clair standing at third base now. And Kirsten Landers. Right, Gonna bring go. her home. And the pitch, outside, ball one. Got to imagine the adjustment for Landers in this at-bat is trying to see something down, struck out on that rise ball way over her head in the last at-bat. Want to try to get yourself into a good hitter's count here, see if Felton will bring you something over the dish. We've seen the two-out production already play in favor for Mississippi State. That's an area that really aided them last season, too. Just being able to come through with those clutch RBIs, especially from the meat of your order, your power hitters. When there's people on base, you want to make sure that those hitters are bringing them in. Leading 364 with two outs. And Landers receives the pitch and fouls it off. A 
little reassurance from Shannon Doherty, the first baseman into her pitcher, Caitlin Felton. Two balls and a strike. The pitch, and Landers pulls it, and foul. Change up up in the zone, her quick hands got around it, just barely foul down that first base line. I thought for a second it might hit first base, but just a bit too early on that swing. And now after falling behind, Caitlin Felton working her way back into this count. Is there something that you can describe that you've liked about what Caitlin Felton has done? I like that she's constantly mixed things up. She's not going to the same location every single time. She's sprinkling in that 56 mile an hour change up just enough to get them to miss hit the ball. And I like that pitch too up in the zone. After that change up, that rise ball coming in 66 miles an hour, looks like it's coming in even quicker than that. And I think back to that first inning, how tight the strike zone was. She hasn't let that phase her at all. She's just adjusted to it. That's the big thing for pitchers across the country, being able to adjust to that strike zone throughout the ball game. And the walk to Kirsten Landers. Runners now at the corners. And two out for Paige Cook. Paige Cook loves these situations. She helped to build a name for herself in Starkville and around the SEC. In two out scenarios. And by the numbers, I think she's two for two on the day. She had a double, <laughs> came around to score a run back in the second. And then, of course, hit that home run earlier. This is that pinch hit home run. We talked about how Mississippi State just couldn't get anything going offensively until this swing. The senior stepping up for the rest of the offense knew she had to put a good cut on that one to win them the ball game. And a huge swing by Paige Cook pulling that thing over the left field wall. Big cut there. You know, and just describing the type of hitter that the Paige Cook is, you know, Samantha Ricketts said, look, she, she doesn't think. She just acts. She just does. She sees, go, see ball, hit ball. Nip the outside part of the plate. Good pitch there from Caitlin Felton. Good location, too. You'll notice when Paige Cook steps into the box, her left foot's open. So she leaves herself a bit vulnerable to that outside pitch, but we saw what she did earlier in this game. She took that outside pitch, drove it into the right center gap. So Felton again challenging her outside because she knows if she brings it in, it has a chance of going over that left field <laughs> wall. We saw that in that last game. Well, three of her five hits have been for extra bases, and we saw those numbers. The RBI production with two outs. Eight total on the weekend. One area where she really grew last season was learning from her previous at-bats. I know I talk all the time that there's something to be learned from every single pitch that is thrown in the ball game that you can use to your advantage in your at-bats, and that is something that she really worked on last season that she's carrying on into this season. Going the dirt from Felton, three balls and two strikes. And after that change up in the dirt too, you can learn. Typically pitchers don't go back to that off speed so you can change your game plan and hunt and anticipate that a fastball's coming in this 3-2 count. Constant adjustments within the game, within each pitch even. 
Second full count in a row for Felton. And this one fielded by Doherty at first base. Tags the bag, and that ends the inning. 5-2 ball game, Whitley through the third. Let's take a look at tonight's performance update prepared by Tax Act, and it's the Knights offense heating up in the second inning. Started with Jasmine Williams scoring Jonisha Rowe from second base, and then it's Olivia Elliott blasting that one off of the center field wall. And then the big RBI producer, Jada Cody, coming through yet again, driving this one through that 3-4 hole to extend the Knights' lead of 5-2. to two. And the final game of the weekend here, the first inning, you saw the Knights get a hit, but that second inning, which helped them take the lead and hold as is, scoring four runs on five of nine at the plate. My dude, <laughs> he's just like, I'm prepared. Two, I got my phone. <laughs> now, it may not be ESPN Plus on the screen. It could be a little Coco Melon, Baby Shark, Baby Finn. Disney we have, Plus. We have, oh, yeah, we got to do that. <laughs> you know what? The executives are saying, you're welcome. <laughs> and a, thank you. Is that a Moana yes, pun yes, intended? Yes, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I gotcha. If you could just break into song, because I know you've watched that repeatedly. I, I do know all the words to that song. Mm -hmm. I do sing it to and from school every day for my kids. <laughs> but trust me, you do not want to hear me sing it. <laughs> Chime in on Twitter and tell us if you want to hear Madison uh, it's sing. It's going to be a no. Before. It's going to be a no. <laughs> Savannah Adams set to lead things off for the UCF Knights. Designated player, struck out her first time up. A couple of unique stances that we see from these hitters for UCF. When Savannah Adams steps into the box, typically you see people with a stride, but her front foot does not move at all. She barely even lifts up her heel. She is just really getting into those legs, utilizing that back leg when she swings. Sometimes people use the stride as a timing mechanism as well, so her timing mechanism a little bit different. And it's a slight change from last year. Last season, she didn't pick up her foot at all, but she did pick up her heel a bit. So that's an offensive adjustment that she's made coming into this 2023 season, is keeping that heel planted. Gets underneath this one. Shallow left field charging is Malu Ulu, and she is retired. I love the tendencies that you're able to pick up, Madison, and just seeing within the players. So there is not necessarily one advantage of doing it one way opposed to the other. That's the beauty of the game of baseball and softball is that there's no one right way to hit the ball up at the plate. Everybody has their own swing, their own rhythm, whatever makes them feel comfortable up at the box. The grounder over to Barbary. And quickly, two away. Well, here's our SEC Big Ten Super Tuesday doubleheader on the hardwood with some of the top teams in each conference going at it. Tenth break, Tennessee in the College Station to face off against Texas A&M at seven. Then after that at nine, Indiana and Michigan State. Fourteenth rank Hoosiers taking on the Tom Izzo's, the fighting Tom Izzo's, my God. You know, we watch a lot of Tennessee basketball in our house. Santiago Bescovi. If only I could shoot as well as he Dude. can. <laughs> I'm going with the ladies, though. Thursday, a huge matchup huge as matchup. they're going to host number one South Carolina inside Thompson Bowling Arena. Always a fantastic place to play. And uh, we talked about the upset of number one, Oklahoma. I'll tell you, top-ranked Gamecocks were in jeopardy of losing their first game of the season, an overtime victory over Ole Miss to secure their perfect record another day. So impressive what Don Staley's been able to do with her team, and you've got somebody like Aaliyah Boston on the floor. You've got a chance to win every single game. <laughs> oh, this one. 
gets away from Hawk and hits Jasmine Williams. And she calmly walks to first. Uh, just trying to maybe walk off some of that sting too. <laughs> Well, you keep talking about the velocity that Kinley Hawk brings in the circle, and that velocity does not feel good when it makes contact with your leg. Two out base runner for the Knights, and Janisha Rowe, who singled last inning, now steps in. Two to row. The center fielder for the Knights out of Avon Park. And she goes around as that one comes inside. And that's confirmed by James Colsey along first base. And that does it for the third inning. Top four coming up when we return to Clearwater. Check out the schedule update brought to you by Evo Shield. And these are the results for the Mississippi State Bulldogs here in Clearwater. They opened with a huge win over Indiana, followed that up with another one off of a ranked Arizona team. Yeah, and a tough loss there, too, to Michigan. A back and forth game. It really came down to the very last swing. Mississippi State was still in it. Not able to come away with a win, but they bounced back against South Florida this morning with that run rule victory. Seven, eight, nine up here, due up in the top of the fourth. Getting a cracking with Aquana Brownlee. Flew out to left. Last time up. That jersey tuck there from Caitlin Felton along that right side. Sometimes you got to get, <laughs> get the sleeve out of the way. You got to get the sleeve out of there. <laughs> Whatever works for the pitchers. Yep. It too. I like that. Whatever works for the pitchers. The equipment managers may feel some type of way. Though, <laughs> <like> the <laughs> constant tug and change and maybe dirt as. The great hitting, the lead off the inning for Mississippi State continues. Aquana Brownlee adds to that. 750 for Brownlee in that lead off position. Well, and talking about the schedule, that's the big one right there. Number one, Oklahoma heading to Starkville for the first time to take on Mississippi State in News Park. It's a big matchup for Mississippi State too, to, to test yourself. You want to see where you stack up against the best in the country. And they've done that for the past several seasons too. And again, all those learning experiences when you're going up against the top competition to prepare you for the postseason down the stretch. Coach Rickett said that that really helped her team so much last year when they headed down into Tallahassee for that regional because they already had that experience, that big game feel against top opponents. I was going to say, it's definitely going to bring a postseason feel to Starkville and also, you know, continue to carry that momentum after those huge crowds for Super Regionals, better than 2,000 plus when they faced off and hosted Arizona. And 
It's like the biggest ticket in town. Like there's no professional team. Sam Ricketts said that just did so much for our program. You're talking about largest crowds in history in the state of Mississippi to watch softball. It was so much fun to watch that series too. Everybody lined out on the outfield wall into every single pitch. Uh -huh. Very reminiscent of what we've seen here. <laughs> now standing room only here in Clearwater. Madison, I was blown away because, like, for that last game against Florida State, Alabama, people were, like, tucked underneath the stands. <laughs> That's Just where I was. I was, I was peeking through <laughs> the chain link fence. <laughs> Wanted to get a good view of the pitcher and the way that the ball was moving, so that was my spot. Back behind home, peeking through the chain link fence. <laughs> Any type of hideout that you could find set up camp. And this one pulled to left field by Nadia Barbary, and it's a no-doubter off the bat of Barbary. The freshman producing her first home run of the season. And of her career. And it couldn't have come at a better time. Caitlin Felton was really starting to find her groove in the circle the past few innings. And this is a rise ball up in the zone. And she takes her barrel straight to it. Tiffany, those first career home runs from these freshmen often give me chills because I'm just so excited to see them be able to perform on this type of stage. You can see her teammates just busting out of the dugout. And we're continuing our trend of seeing home runs at every game that we've called this weekend. This is an early season indication that uh, you may see a lot of great offense this season. I know it's still early in the year. However, comma. <laughs> I wasn't a pitcher, and I wouldn't want to be a pitcher. <laughs> I'm just going to throw that out there. Speaking of pitchers, too, some action in the UCF bullpen. Sarah Willis and Angelina DeVoe getting loose. Really, for both of these squads, they're used to going to the bullpen. Mm -hmm. They're used to using relief pitchers in their game, really attacking a lot of these teams by their complete staff have a lot of pitchers that complement each other with what they're able to bring to the table. The 0-2 to McKenna. And Cody, you saw asking for that outside, and that is something that even with an ace on your staff, you still see coaches moving over to that mindset of, Let's pass the innings around a little bit and not lay it all on one pitcher to try to get it done over a weekend. Well, and these offenses are just so good, and the scouting reports are out on every single pitcher. So you're constantly even having to change your game within that ball game, depending on what the hitters are doing. So it just seems like a lot of these coaches are going to having, having six or seven arms on the staff. McKenna way out in front of that one, and Felton gets her to go down swinging. Second strikeout of the night for the Knights pitcher. Love how she bounces back from that home run, gets a strikeout on the very next at bat. She goes with the off-speed pitch. Jackie McKenna way out in front on that swing. You can feel how tense this game is getting, too, just by the reactions out of Caitlin Felton after that strikeout. Back to the top with Macy Graff. Well, they said they wanted to put on a show. Okay, for <laughs> this being the closer of the Tax Act Clearwater Invitational presented by Evo Shield. and giving viewers plenty of reason to stay glued right here.
the pitch from Felton. And that's a fair ball pulled down the first baseline and Graf wasn't sure about it, didn't even leave the batter's box. And two down. Well, it looked like it started in foul territory and then worked its way back into fair territory. It's taking another look at it here. Pulls it down that first baseline, oh. bounces foul, comes back fair. Yeah. Heads up play by Shannon Doherty to stick with that ground ball and get the out over at first. The English of that ball, as you said, <laughs> and moved over, but the important part is you gotta sell it. And Doherty just played it through. Tough luck there too for Macy Graff, she's somebody who's had a fantastic weekend down here in Clearwater. Was batting 500 before that at bat, and sometimes the ball just spins back into fair territory. There's not, <laughs> not much you can do. What's been your favorite part of the weekend? You know I love the long ball. <laughs> I love to see the home runs. I know. We're used to seeing the pitchers' duels and the pitchers doing their thing in the circle, but I just love to see all these home runs all over the yard. Well, if you're just tuning in, good news is we've already seen the ball jump out of the yard in this game. I think our total now is 89 on the weekend. The latest to do it was Nadia Barbary to bring the Mississippi State Bulldogs within one run of the 20th ranked Knights. I do think in our unofficial competition of which field or which game crew saw the most home runs this weekend, I oh. think we win that race. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Madison Shipman, Tiffany Green here with you. And yes, indeed. But I tell you, all of our announced crews have had plenty to get excited about. I mean, it's just been a really good weekend of softball. You know, sometimes there can be a start to a season and there's great anticipation and sometimes it doesn't always live up to the bill. But this did, it has, and this game is yet another indication. Full count, the pitch from Felton, Briley St. Clair inside, lines out. Two Doherty at first. We'll talk to Sam Ricketts, her team closed the gap within one. We'll hear from her on the other side. One run ball game in Clearwater as we close out this fantastic weekend. Mississippi State head coach Sam Ricketts joining us now. And coach, with the way that your team has performed this weekend, what has pleased you most? I think the thing that's really just pleased us the most has been them competing and not being afraid of the opportunity of the opponents and just getting after it and playing our game and being loose and having fun no matter what the score is or what that pressure situation might be. And coach, I wanted to talk to you about some of the freshmen that have stepped up for you in your lineup, Macy Graff and Nadia Barbary. How excited mm -hmm. are you to see those young players step up? Yes, this is huge to get them this experience this early in the season and get a little taste of what SEC play is going to be like. Um, you know, every game is big, just like this one, just like all the ones we played this weekend. And really fun to watch them step up and get comfortable and just, you know, perform the way we know they can. And it's been fun to get them acclimated and get them in a maroon white jersey. All right. Thanks, Coach. We appreciate the time. Thank you. Hell State. Well, Ricketts talking about the SEC season, the gauntlet that you have to go through to try to make it out of the Southeastern Conference. It beats you up. Week in and week out. It really feels like a super regional every single weekend in the SEC. There are absolutely no breaks. Even look like a at a Texas A&M team picked to finish 12th in the SEC this year, and they really made a splash down here in Clearwater. So it's going to be a tough year in that Southeastern Conference. 12 teams sent to the postseason out of the SEC. UCF and South Florida representing the American Athletic Conference. 
You hear coaches talk about it all the time. If you can make it to the SEC, you can feel very confident that you can make it in most any situation or against any foe you face. Uh, it was two years in a row that all 13 teams from the SEC made it into the postseason. Just an example of how tough it is, but the American Conference, tough as well. The past couple of years with USF and Georgina Cork in the circle for them. Of course, the rise of UCF. Can't forget about Wichita State and that hitting duo that they have for them as well between Sydney McKinney and Addison Bernard. Always got to be on the watch out for them. And that's the fun and looseness that Coach Ricketts was talking about in her interview with just seeing your players seemingly at ease. That pitch inside to Olivia Elliott. Elliott with that two run double back in the second. The nine hole hitter. Has the count even at two apiece. Looks like that foul ball got Jackie McKenna in her left leg. Taking a second to walk that one off. And you stated before just how much punishment Ooh. catchers take back behind the dish. <laughs> Still a smile on her she, face somehow after that she one. She was like, this is where it hit. <laughs> just so you know, the left left thigh. Somebody feel sorry for me. <laughs> and there's just nothing you can do on those foul balls yeah. either. So tough back there, but Coach Ricketts was really excited about the leadership that she's been bringing back behind the plate. Loved her presence back there as well. I know we've talked a lot about the graduation of Mia Davidson from the offensive side, but also from what she brought defensively being back behind the plate for so many years. And Kinley Hawk fired up after that strikeout of Olivia Elliott. Third of the night. A good battle back and forth, working her way up in the zone, but finishes it off with that drop ball, that heavy 68 mile per hour drop ball to get Olivia Elliott to strike out. Michaela Macario, the leadoff hitter for the Knights. Sees ball one. You know, these UCF batters have been able to benefit. We're talking about the different batting stances of Savannah Adams and others, but also the addition of Jen Salling and Shannon Sale to that assistant group. And Salling, of course, Olympian and All-American from Washington, joining Ball Malone and the Knights for a second time. She was there in 2019. Yeah, taking over coaching the hitting to a fantastic player and hitter in her own right. She was actually with this UCF staff back in 2019 as a volunteer before she went off and trained to be in the Olympics. Ended up winning a bronze medal with Canada in the Olympics with our very own Danielle Laurie. I think that's a huge pickup for this UCF offense just to be able to learn from somebody like her with so much experience. You can see her right there at the front of the dugout constantly communicating with these batters. Check half swing there from Macario, and she's retired. And one thing from listening to Jen Salling talk about hitting, too, she's all about gathering your hips. Your hips are what initiate the swing, so you can see some of these unique stances, but everybody's trying to load that weight into their back leg, so by the time they initiate their swing, their weight is going back towards the pitcher. You want all your force going towards that ball. The one constant that you see with these stances is that they are getting as much power as possible into their swings. Now those are the types of conversations that Cindy Ball Malone was just like, 
I'm good on having, you know, I, I, I was taking over the hitting duties for a couple of seasons. I'm good. Jen loves the cages, being in the batting cages and teaching. All those repeatable movements, mm -hmm. doing drills over and over. And she said that's why they work so well together. Coach Bob Malone likes to be on the field hitting live to be able to watch where the ball is flying to. But Coach Salling likes to be in those cages working constantly with these batters just to fine tune some of those mechanics. Even right there talking to her player. Probably I'd imagine that maybe that's a spray chart as far as where the pitcher is throwing the ball. In what spots are they locating those pitches? can kind of give you a leg up on maybe which spot you want to zone in on. See your mark in <laughs> the paper right there, just in case. I'm jotting that down, but think about Sally being added and also Shannon Sale, who Helps out with the pitchers, grad assistant, but adding a third assistant to the coaching staff in softball. Much needed, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Just the sheer number of athletes that you carry on a roster, and not just for softball, but for baseball as well. Mm -hmm. They're adding that volunteer position as an, an additional paid coach. The amount of athletes in the time restrictions, of course, that you have, I think it's going to be great just to be able to have that extra extra person on the staff to help out. On the 3-2 pitch, and Jada Cody is awarded the two-out walk. Well, you have to be really careful when you're pitching to somebody like Jada Cody because she has so much pop in her bat. And this is how Henley Hawk attacks her, working the drop ball inside for strike one. Decides to go even further inside to see if she can chase. Ball one goes away, way away. You cannot miss over the plate. Another foul ball, a good battle between these two. Just missing those drop balls too far inside. That last one a bit too low. A couple of really nice takes in there by Jada Cody. Gets her on base. Shannon Doherty has had a quiet weekend to start for UCF. And just the second week of the collegiate softball season. The work ethic though, when you think about a player like Shannon Doherty, who's made her so successful, really addicted to the process, right? Wanting to be the first one in, last one out. Putting in the extra effort and time. So much so that I think even Coach Cindy Ball Malone needs to remind her, hey, it's okay to take a break <laughs> every once in a while. But just a, such a hard worker, just the type of teammate that you want on your team because you know she's going to come into every single bit game being as prepared as possible. Taking off is Jada Cody and... Looks like they're gonna call yeah. obstruction. And Cody may be a little gimpy after that slide in. Kind of went into the base awkwardly. Yeah, so when you don't have possession of the ball as a fielder, you have to make sure that the runner has a clear path to the base. And Nadia Barbary coming across before she had possession of the ball was in that base path. Looks like her knee goes into the foot of Nadia Barbary as well. That obstruction call is so tough for, for shortstops. There's so many moving parts when you go to cover that steal. Not a lot of time to, to move your way around, too. That's that obstruction rule. You cannot be blocking the base or the base path without the ball. That's the key that the umpires are looking for there. So you're going to see shortstops maybe set up on the inside part of second base to allow that base path. But because the throw was carrying her, 
towards the second base side of second base, she really had no choice but to get into that base path. And it's just something that's really difficult. You talked about it at, at shortstop. You see it sometimes even though at home plate as well with catchers. I mean, infielders just sometimes have a tough time with that. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I, 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 it's not my favorite. Yeah. And I think back to putting myself into that position as a shortstop and how hard it would be to be watching the ball but also paying attention to the fact that I can't get into that base path. Mm -hmm. A lot of respect for the shortstops in today's age that are able to do that. Ground ball over to second base and Graf bobbled it for just a little bit. And so Chloe Evans aboard with the error from second. Couple of errors from this Mississippi State defense that we've seen in today's ball game. A hard hit ground ball over to Cat Wallace, but that is a ground ball you have to field, especially with two outs. You've got to get out of this inning. A one run ball game. If you have an opportunity to get your team back into the dugout, especially with somebody like Chloe Evans coming up, you've got to take advantage of it. Down the right field line, bounces off the bag at first base in the hop fortuitous for Brownlee. And the inning is retired. Runners left at the corners. It's still 5-4 UCF. Gorgeous night from Clearwater at the Eddie Seymour Complex. One run ball game as we head to the top of the fifth. And we've mentioned throughout the broadcast just how wonderful this weekend has been. Madison, give us your accolades over the last four days. Yeah, I'm handing out my awards for this Clearwater <laughs> Invitational. Top team, of course, going to UCLA with that 5-0 and record, outscoring their opponents 31-14. to Top pitcher going to Megan Foremo. Just gutsy performances from her, 3-0 and on the weekend. And my top hitter, Kylie Naomi for the Oklahoma State Cowgirls was so impressive this entire weekend with the numbers that she was able to put up, batting over 500, close to 600 with 12 RBI. And of course, I gotta show a little defense in here too. My top play for this Invitational goes to Kristen White in center field for Alabama, running through the wall to make this catch in center field. <laughs> My jaw hit the floor when I saw this play. And to top it off, she got the walk-off hit to win it. Oh, <laughs> that's a good day at the office. <laughs> it's been just amazing. Now, you, you give props to UCLA, and, and certainly they won some really big games, but Oklahoma State also walked away undefeated, and they put up runs, honey. It was really close. I was going back and forth between which team I wanted to award that top spot to, and ultimately I think UCLA had a bit stronger strength of schedule here mm -hmm. just in this Clearwater Invitational, so that's why UCLA edged them out by just a little bit. And it was a tough one to close out today against Louisiana. The Raging Cajuns tested them for sure. Bruins walked away with a 4-3 decision. Two two count to Chloe Malu'ulu, Mississippi State has been successful getting the leadoff runner aboard in all nine innings here today. The 2-2 from Felton. Over to short. And the throw to first in time. We talked about some of those big names. Megan Faramo in UCLA and Oklahoma State. But I really liked the performance this weekend of the Duke Blue Devils. Marissa Young's group came in here and looked really good. There were some changes just like any, but they were able to squeak out wins when necessary and have a good showing here as well. They went four and one over their games. 
I was impressed with the way that they started off this tournament too, going toe to toe with Alabama, putting up some runs early off of Montana Fouts. Got some good pitching performances too from Cassidy Curd and from Jayla Wright. And we saw a couple of web gems made by Anna Gold over at third <laughs> yeah. base. She was up there for a contender on my top plays of this tournament as well. well she was locking down that hot corner at third base as Gold. And the Blue Devils, I think just around Duke has come through here. Clemson has been a part of this invitational. Notre Dame, Virginia Tech. Now we've talked about the strength of the SEC and the American in this ball game, but also the strength of the ACC has just exploded mm -hmm. too. A, a conference that was primarily dominated by Florida State for so many years. And you have all these other teams really just rising up the ranks very quickly too. Look in the top 25, to your point, Madison, four teams ranked as Florida State, the preseason favorite, but you know they've all been trading who's going to be regular season champ and tournament champions. <laughs> it's always up for grabs, it seems, over the last couple of years, to your point. That's what you put those rankings out there, the preseason rankings, but at the end of the day, you've got to battle it out on the field. And Seeing some of those matchups just gets me so fired up for the rest of this regular season to see how everything shakes out. The pitch to five, Pito fouled off, remains two balls and two strikes. And the strength of schedule is so important in building your resume and the RPI and that road and walk towards the postseason. Something the collection, selection committee takes into consideration. And that's why these types of events are so important. Yeah. Goes chasing for that one. Five, Pito is retired. Felton, third K of the night. Uh, speaking of the Duke Blue Devils, their men's basketball team will be in action in the ACC Big 12 Monday doubleheader as they host the Louisville Cardinals at 7 Eastern. Then we head on over to the Big 12 with Kansas and TCU, a top 25 matchup at 9 o'clock Monday on ESPN. And always, you can find it on the ESPN app. Woo! Watch out. I mean... <laughs> Mia was ready for it. Mia yeah. Davidson right there at the front of the dugout. That's been a couple of times that some hot shots have gone towards that Mississippi State dugout throughout this tournament. We might start to see Coach Rickett slowly creep her way back into the dugout. <laughs> <laughs> and Mia Davidson-Smith, graduate student coach this season for the Bulldogs, and we've mentioned it, the all-time SEC home run leader. So Kirsten Landers goes to first base. The catcher interference, and let's take another look at it right here. All the way in the back of the box, and yep, mm -hmm. makes contact with Jada Cody's glove. She hit that ball so hard, I yeah. didn't even notice in real time that she had hit her glove. Good pick up there by the home plate umpire, Matt Dial. If Christy Cornwall is listening in, she's got to be pleased with the way that you've been able to <laughs> explain to the audience the rules. I've seen a couple of interesting plays in today's game. Matt Wallace, who came in as a defensive substitution at the plate for Mississippi State, her first at bat. Back to back strikes thrown up the hands of Caitlin Felton.
Pick Shane Anders was taken off with that 2 2 count. Good couple of swings in a row. Cat Wallace timing up that drop ball outside. I'm waiting for Felton to bust out that off speed pitch again in this at bat. It's on the way. Grounded over to third base and flipped over to second base. And that ends the inning. So UCF clinging to a one run lead. We'll talk to the Knights leader. Welcome back to the 2023 Clearwater, Tax Acts Clearwater Invitational presented by Evo Shield. Madison Shipman, Tiffany Green here with you. A 5 4 ball game in favor of UCF, the 20th ranked Knights. Trying to close out with a win. Their head coach, Cindy Ball Malone, joining us now. And coach, you've gone through a number of practices and scrimmages and games now throughout this weekend. What have you liked most about what your team has showed you through the first two weeks? Well, you know, I like how we come out and attack. Um, I think our pitchers are learning how to pitch by committee and complement each other. Um, and we're just growing every time. You know, we get out here together. We've been through a lot of different opportunities, some extra inning games. So um, just growing and getting better each pitch. And coach, the past couple of games, we've seen Jasmine Williams and Kennedy Searcy up at the top of the order. What made you want to move them down in the order today? Because it's paid off for you. Uh, I don't know. I, I just felt like <laughs> I wanted to get momentum going down there. And I told them, I'm going to put you down there. Let's keep it going. Um, and they did exactly that. So looking for a little bit more right now. Those gut instincts are working for you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate the time, Coach. All right. Thank you. It certainly paid off for sure. You think about the single from Cersei and then Jasmine Williams also producing a run here on a base hit. Sometimes it's just a feeling, too. You just get these vibes. Of maybe it's a pinch hitter that you think is going to get it done in a certain situation or just mixing up the lineup just to change things up a bit. But they really were the catalysts back in that second inning to get the scoring party started. And two, she's also seen how her players have responded in different moments throughout the weekend. She talked about a couple of tight ball games that have gone to extras. And then maybe the jump start that's necessary, which you pointed out, Madison, has paid off. I almost think, too, that Cersei and even Williams can almost act like additional leadoff batters down towards the bottom of the lineup, flip things over to get some of your power hitters back up to the plate. Savannah Adams flares that one into shallow right. One away. Just think about this field over the weekend. 12 of the 16 teams ranked. And then you say, OK, well, this is just uh, another opportunity for us to say, hey, we know what to do when we face off against some big time teams, the schedule that you put together, ever so important for Cindy Ball Malone, looking for the Knights to keep building on the success that they had from last year. They'll face off against a number of teams that advance to the NCAA tournament. Sharply hit ground ball to second base and two down. And just to remind our viewers just how UCF has fared in this Clearwater Invitational. It's been a tough row, but I'm, again, right in ball games. Started off really two. hot against Michigan. Tough loss to AM. Duke in extra innings in that Alabama game. They were up 4 nothing at one point, and Alabama ended up working their way from behind, coming back to win that one in extras. 
But it doesn't really get any easier for UCF coming up. They go on to face the Raging Cajuns, which we've seen in this tournament who have been fantastic. Then UCLA, Florida, who's still undefeated on the season, and Oklahoma State, who we know can mash the ball all over the field. Indeed. She's got nine teams that finished ranked in the top 25 on the schedule. Congrats to the Louisiana Raging Cajuns program. Picked up their 1800th program win. I know when the schedules came out, I was really circling that UCF and Oklahoma State matchup too. And we got a chance to talk to Sydney Balbalone about that. And she said, really, I wanted them to get a feel for what it's like in Stillwater before we go into the Big 12 Conference mm. next year. So an added bonus, not only are you playing a great competitor, but also to get your team used to being in that stadium. Coach is always having to do so much strategizing <laughs> and looking ahead, pushing a program forward bringing the best out of student athletes. The one, two to Jasmine Williams, the backhand and couldn't get it out of the glove in time from Barbary at short. And the two out infield single. I know that goes down as a hit. She didn't make an error on that play, but I still think that that's a ground ball that has to be made. We know that UCF's a team that likes to take advantage of any opportunity you give them. And plus, Jasmine Williams has a ton of speed on the base pads. So if you have an opportunity to get that out, charge it hard, fire it across the diamond, because you never know what may happen. Kinley Hawk had a shot out of one, two, three inning for the first time tonight for Mississippi State pitcher. Instead, the inning is extended. Johnny Chereau, the center fielder, now at the plate. One ball and no strike. Chereau. Talked about the movement in the lineup from Ball Malone, putting some of those productive hitters lower in the order, and it's worked. Yeah, and I, I just think moving forward, they're looking to get more production from the top of that lineup. People like Jada Cody, Shannon Doherty, Chloe Evans, that's the meat of their order. They need to be able to come through at a more consistent clip and drive in those runs. We did see Jada Cody back in the second inning, able to get some RBIs over to the right side of the field. And we know that there's some power there. Chloe Evans had a walk-off home run to beat Boise State to kick off this season. Seems to be a trend the past couple of years that yeah, UCF's going to give us one of those dramatic finishes to start for us the off. the dramatics, yeah. <laughs> We're here for it. Low taking all the way, three balls and a strike. The one three put out and that ends the inning. So through five, UCF holding tight to their one run lead. Here's a look at tonight's game track brought to you by Evo Shield. The errors rack up for Mississippi State. However, they still remain in this ball game, just trailing by one to the 20th ranked UCF Knights. A couple of costly errors too, because UCF was able to capitalize on those miscues. And not only does it affect that initial inning, but it's also another batter that comes up at the end of the game. That's always the way I look at those errors. You've got to play defense behind your pitchers. He's on the other field, but looking over and... Uh, it's the eagle-eye uh, view from <laughs> over there. <laughs> 
Now, we, we did see a hawk throughout the Maybe weekend. I should have said Hawkeye. <laughs> <laughs> the Hawkeye made several appearances on our air for this softball invitational. <laughs> Juana Brown lead leading it off, singled her last time up. The pitch from Felton and Cody. And the ball on the strength. Brownlee, who was primarily in a reserve role the last couple of seasons, now thrust into Starting lineup and Ricketts loves what she's done thus far. We talked about the power punch that she packs. The one, two. The power for Brownlee is coming from her lower half, and it's actually similar to the stance that we see on the other side from Savannah Adams, how she doesn't have a high kick. She really doesn't have a stride. She gets low into her legs. Has a nice drive forward, but her arms and her hands are more of her timing mechanism rather than a stride. She has good plate coverage, too. I feel like that's always the downside of not moving your feet is maybe you can't reach as far on that outside corner. But in today's ball game, we've seen her show that she can cover the outside, foul off those pitches until the pitcher brings one a little bit closer. He's off of that one. Count draws full. A senior out of Houston, Mississippi. Sarah Willis making a play in the bullpen. <laughs> She's ready. <laughs> Another great fielding pitcher, two-way player for UCF. And coming over from Seattle and into sunny Florida. Washington transfer. Off the full count, opposite field hit to the wall for a quarter Brownlee. Covering the plate very well from her stance. And another leadoff batter is aboard as, let's take another look at it here. Getting low into her legs. Again, that's her power. This pitch low and outside, and she drives it all the way out to that right field wall. And she has her eyes on it the entire time, rounding first base, able to get into second base easily. Love that swing from her, though. It's not easy to be able to hit a pitch like that low and away with that much authority, but that just shows you how strong she is in her legs and her swing. Putting in that time and work in the batting cages to find success. It's Nadia Barbary as we take a look at tonight's performance uptake brought to you by and prepared by Tax Act. Let's look at what Nadia Barbary did in her last at bat. Her first career home run is a huge two run blast to bring the Bulldogs within one run of tying up this ball game. Can she give them the lead here with another big swing?
Renadia Barbary, one of those players, Sam Ricketts, excited about coming in. She knew she had the potential to be a big hitter. So adding some depth in that infield for the Bulldogs, but there, elects to try to lay down the bunt, successfully sacrificing herself and moving Bradley over to third. Perfectly executed. We saw her hit the home run in her last at bat, but this at bat, she's called upon to lay down the sacrifice bunt. Good touch, gets it back to the pitcher and advances Brownlee over to third base. Really nice job by the freshman. Now the vet, Jackie McKenna. In the batter's box. And Caitlin Felton putting it in there for a strike. Dirt and laying off. Back to back change ups, too. We saw the first one go in there for a strike. Felton tries to bury that one a little bit lower, maybe get a swing and miss or a weak ground ball. But if you're Jackie McKenna here, you're looking for something up in the zone, something you can get barreled to and drive it deep enough into the grass to score a Quana Brownlee at third. McKenna. Foul ball. So we've seen a lot of action in this ball game. Both teams doing most of their scoring through the first couple of innings. Mississippi State inch their way even closer back in the fourth. List this one into right down the first baseline and in the foul territory. gathers herself and is ready. It's a good take there by McKenna and I like the location from Felton too. Could see McKenna leaning over on the outside on that take. That's where you want to put that pitch on a one-two count, make sure that you're not giving her anything good to hit. And just able to poke it through the three, four hole along that right side, and Aquana Brownlee comes home off the RBI single for Jackie McKenna, and we're tied at five. Just like her last at bat where she anticipated the pitch, Coming inside, excuse me, her first at bat where she drove it out to left field. It's like she knew that they were gonna stay outside and she just throws her hands at this pitch, squeaks it through that 3-4 hole to tie up this ball game. Second RBI of the night for Jackie McKenna. That calls for pitching change for UCF. We'll tell you more about the pitcher when we come back. Another returning arm to the staff for UCF, Angelina De DeVoe, the junior coming in relief for Caitlin Felton. Well, we know that UCF really likes to go to their bullpen, especially playing some matchups, and they're going to bring in the lefty, and she's going to slow things down quite a bit, 58 to 60 miles per hour, working low in the zone. She's got a nice little drop and a curveball. Very crafty coming from the left side, and I, I'd imagine they're working the lefty-lefty matchups here with the top of the order coming up for Mississippi State. The night is done for now for Caitlin Felton.
122 pitches thrown. All five runs are earned. A couple of walks and three strikeouts, but another chance to go back to the lab, reassess, and get better. Put herself in position to try to get a win, but Jackie McKenna spoiled that. Had some really good pitches in there, too, I think, on that last one. Maybe just over-adjusting too much, bringing it a little bit too close to that plate. Still a good pitch, but just a better swing. Lacey Graff, who we've told you about, has had a very fine weekend. In just her second season of second weekend of college softball. Take you back to Friday, and this is what she did against Arizona. Blasting a pitch low and inside, turning on it for a big home run. She's had herself a fantastic weekend up in that leadoff position. Not easy for anybody to do, but especially as a freshman. Indeed, commits there, and Angelina. Devine gets the job done. DeVoe. Using that lefty-lefty matchup to her advantage. So when she brings the curveball in there, it's going to continue to tail away. Gets a check swing from Macy Graff. And the strikeout. Barley St. Clair swinging at that one. Well, one of the things that we heard from Cindy Ball Malone with his pitching staff was that they all put in the work to try to fill those shoes of Gianna Mancha and came a Woodall because they pitched about 77% of the innings. And so each took it upon themselves to be ready for this moment. They're going to step in and call in Angelina DeVoe and others for bigger roles. And they knew it was going to be a group effort coming into this season. They're going to need every single arm on this staff to win ball games and to utilize the matchups that they have available. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for DeVoe, and that ends the inning. So she comes in, relief does the job that she needs, and we're knotted at five going down to... DeVoe gets called upon to do a job striking out two in a row to get her team back in the dugout. Monday night, that's tomorrow, coming your way out of the Pac-12, third ranked Stanford hosting UCLA, a top 20 matchup from Maples Pavilion, nine Eastern, six Central here on ESPN2 and the ESPN app. Everyone look alive. Woo-woo! <laughs> Let's go tie ball game as we move to the bottom of the sixth. Several travel teams coming to check out some wonderful softball. Partner, you just shared with me that uh, you and Cindy Ball Malone played for the same travel ball coaches. <laughs> Gary and Dean Fawcett. Yeah, that's who we both played for and Coach Paul Malone's nickname is Coach Bear, and yeah. she actually got her nickname from our travel ball coaches. You know, I saw that in the notes, and I was wondering where it came from. And now you've provided that inside as the nine-hole hitter, Olivia Elliott, getting on. And that's the pinch hitter, Burge, actually, who's speedy around the bases. Oh, my. And Katie Burge, ma'am, those wheels. So far in today's ball game, Coach Sydney Ball Malone has been spot on with the changes that she's made. Katie Burge coming in, needing to be a spark plug at the bottom part of the order, and she does exactly that. Look at how quick she is rounding the bases. Eyes on the ball the entire time, taking good lines from base to base. And an easy triple to start things off in the bottom of the sixth inning. Burge, who went through her share of growing pains, Last season, coming in with that first extra base hit of this 2023 campaign, and you know, just came back more confident. Had the opportunity to compete with the Great Britain national team and pick up silver medal this past summer. 
And so those types of experience, experiences always help to boost that confidence. You can learn so much from your teammates at that level, how they operate on a day-to-day -day ba basis, what's their routine, pre-game routine, and even how they approach the game mentally. I think that these young players can take a lot from those international experiences. Another pinch hitter, Aubrey Evans out of Apopka. And the freshman gets her chance and seeing the strategy here and looked like that was really close to hitting her, but because she turned in time. Well, the infield ball. shaded way in here too, knowing their speed over at third base. So they're gonna do whatever they can to try to cut down that run from scoring. back inside pitches. Kinley Hawk has been working inside to the pinch hitter. That one going in for a strike. And two interesting decision here. We talked about using the pinch hitters with Katie Berg and now with Aubrey Evans. But one of the things that Cindy Ball Malone said that she liked about this freshman was her ability to remain even keel in these types of pressure situations. Want to see how she responds here with the game tied. And the go-ahead run 60 feet away. So many nerves can come up in these pressure situations, and I think it's okay as athletes to recognize that it's all right to be nervous, but how do you channel that energy into focus? How do you not let the moment get too big in your mind? That's what these at-bats are all about, and again, you're not gonna know how you deal with these situations until you're thrown into them. It's a big time pinch hit opportunity for Evans here in a tie ball game. You see Evans being backed off the plate. Those inside pitches from Kenley Hawk. Not biting. Full count. And the payoff pitch on the way. Pulls that one, and it's just foul. Just continuing to stay arm side with these inside pitches. Quick moves by Katie Burge over at third base to get out of the way of that foul ball. Into the glove of Brownlee and wisely tagging the runner and seeing Burge at third, stay right where she is. Such a smart play by Brownlee. All that pre-pitch thought, knowing where you're going to go with the ball before it's even hit to you. Hard hit over to her, and she immediately looked over at Katie Burge to make sure that she was staying over at third and then ran up to tag Aubrey Evans. Because she knew as soon as she turned her back to try to throw to first base, Burge was going to take off to home. One of the batters you want up in this UCF lineup is Jada Cody. Cody with three RBI on the weekend. And Josh Johnson will come to the circle and just have a quick discussion knowing the type of hitter that Jada Cody is, how they want to pitch to her. And I'm not surprised that we're continuing to see Kenley Hawk work inside Back in the second inning, it was Jada Cody that hit that ball hard to the right side to score a couple of runs. And so they're challenging her inside, knowing that she has that power, but trying to utilize Kinley Hawk's velocity to see if she can get jammed up on something here. And we keep talking about all these different situations for players. For one like Jada Cody, who had USA softball experience competing with Team USA over the summer. 
building towards moments like this. She's seen them throughout her career, but adding just yet another level of experience. Tiffany, you talked about that USA experience. I do think that there's confidence in how you prepare for a game. And Coach Bomalone said that she's always been a hard worker, but being around some of those athletes on that USA team brought that work to even a, a whole new level. So they're really expecting some big things from Jada Cody this, Jada Cody this season. The Knights returning. RBI producer. Knocked in 75. And her sophomore campaign in there for a strike, so two and two now. Everything's still on that inside part of the plate. She has been working some more up in the zone. That one right at the knees. Trying to see if Cody can get on time with that high velocity coming in. Just as you said that, she tried to change it up. Hawk, knowing that she likes to throw the heat, she said, let me put that change up in there. <laughs> 57 miles per hour. And Cody put a really good cut on it, too. She let go of it a bit too late, so that's why it sailed high in the zone. And you want to keep those off-speed pitches low down at the knees. That way, if they make contact, it's going down into the ground. And gets Cody to strike out. Big one for Kenley Hawk. Kinley Hawk fired up after this strikeout. It's set up with the off-speed pitch up in the zone. Jada Cody barely misses, but then she brings the heat. The very next pitch with that downward movement for the huge strikeout of the big RBI producer for UCF. The emotion from Hawk and the circle after giving up that leadoff single. Now has a chance to get out of the inning, just past the stretch glove of Barbary. And who comes in to produce? None other than Shannon Doherty. You know, she loves these clutch moments. You talk about learning from your teammates at bats. The past two at bats, Kenley Hawk has stayed arm side, really working the pitches inside. And Shannon Doherty goes up there with a plan to attack it. Hitting it straight past the diving glove of Nadia Barbary to put her team ahead. Well, back and forth affair all night long between Mississippi State and UCF. Folks, we are not done yet. Shannon Doherty putting her team back on top. Primarily a, done by <laughs> a lot of singles who have set up those six runs. Not a lot of extra base hits tonight. Brownlee, nice backhand, sprints to first base and ends the inning. Good defensive play by Brownlee, but even better offense from Shannon Doherty. Her Knights lead by one. Tax Act Clearwater Invitational, presented by Evo Shield, is brought to you by Tax Act. File for less and get more. St. Pete Clearwater, Florida. Let's shine. Plan your escape at visitstpeteclearwater.com. And Evo Shield, the source for custom fitting protective gear. Only fitting that this game is as close as it is as the 20th ranked UCF Knights. Three outs away from picking up a win and closing out a very scrappy and tough Mississippi State Bulldog team. Madison Shipman, Tiffany Green here with you. It's just been awesome. It's just been awesome. Elite softball all weekend long. And now it, the plot thickens, the drama builds even more because the heart of the order due up here for Mississippi State. 
And Chloe Malu'ulu is going to lead it off. Malu'ulu held hitless tonight, and Angelina DeVoe decides to stay in. That's what Sydney Ball Malone is going to elect to do. Yeah, I was wondering if they were just going to bring in DeVoe to go against the lefties and Graf and St. Clair, and she did her job, got those back-to-back -back strikeouts, but we've seen Sarah Willis continuing to throw out in that bullpen. I wondered if they might try to work more of a righty-righty matchup by bringing her in here. But Coach Sydney Ball Malone just showing the confidence that she has in Angelina DeVoe in the circle to be able to get the job done and shut the door. To the right side, fielded cleanly and one down. So Aubrey Evans helps get the first out of the inning. Matalasi Faapito sees ball one. Yeah, starting her off with that off-speed pitch. Something DeVoe well known for. She likes to work it again down into the ground, so she's going to induce those ground ball outs, but she has developed an up-spin pitch just to change the eye level for these batters. Good location there. Slowing things down a bit, 59 miles per hour. So these hitters having to completely change their rhythms up at the plate. Another great pitch, very similar location. You slow it down, and then you slow it down some more. Previous pitch was 59 miles per hour. That change up 53 miles per hour. And the junior lefty nearly got Fapito to strike out. Just got a piece of the bat on it. So she'll get another swing. of the weekend. Bulldogs trying to bark back. Goes chasing, Fapito strikes out, two down. So one out away from closing out the weekend with a win for the Knights. It's a big time pitch for Angelina DeVoe. Goes with another change at 52 miles per hour, but she locates this one even lower and further outside to get Fabito chasing. Now Mississippi State looking to bring in a pinch hitter with the game on the line. Shea Moreno's number is called. Second opportunity for Shea Moreno in this tournament with the game on the line. She was the one up that ended the game in the Michigan game that they lost. So another chance for her to come through here. She'll see another righty as Ricketts putting the bat in the hands of Moreno to try to keep this game alive. And continuing to find that placement along the outside part of the plate and the right-handed hitters haven't figured it out. It's a tough spot. Just barely clipping that low and outside part of the strike zone and it's dropping way down in velocity. Yeah. 
So then how does Shea Moreno, who's coming off the bat, or the bench cold, the, the key the is you can't try to do too much because her ball spins and moves so much and she's changing those speeds. If I'm a right-handed hitter in this situation, I'm looking to poke a ball into that right center gap. You know she's going to stay on the outside part of the plate. I'd toe up on that chalk line, take away the inside half, and just go with those outside pitches. But this is what Angelina DeVoe does. She picks on that outside part of the plate to see if you can swing and get yourself out. Comes inside on that one. Two balls and two strikes. That's <laughs> looks to the wristband. DeVoe delivers. And Moreno fouls it away. The dugouts have been active, players very much engaged in providing the soundtrack for tonight's game. Gets her to strike out. Angelina DeVoe helps UCF hold on to the win and close out this tournament with a dub. How about DeVoe coming in as the closer, striking out four of these Mississippi State Bulldogs and her appearance. A complete team effort from UCF. And Tiffany, if this tournament is any indication of what we're going to see for the rest of the softball season, I absolutely cannot wait. I second that for sure, partner, and looking at the numbers over the weekend, we talked about it at the top of the broadcast, but we'll remind our viewers, all 40 games complete now. Oklahoma State and UCLA come out unblemished on the weekend. Several balls, I'm talking about 88 of them, left the yard. 388 runs scored. An offensive fest for many, but a great closing pitching effort for Angelina DeVoe and the UCF Knights pick up the big victory over Mississippi State. What a fantastic weekend. We saw some players excel, elite performances, and all the hard work, energy, and effort put into this event on has all paid off for Madison Shipman. The rest of our great crew, I'm Tiffany Green saying, we out.